Hi, we are at the 77th Symposium, uh, Cold Spring Harbor, and this year's theme is the biology of plants. My name is Ines Chen, I'm the chief editor of Nature Structure Molecular Biology, and I'm here to talk to Sofiane Kamun. Sofiane is uh, at the Sainsbury Laboratory in Norwich, UK. And Sofiane works on uh, the interaction between plants and pathogens. And it's important to know that this is actually the normal uh, conditions in which the plants grow because they don't grow in a sterile environment. And these interactions can have actually uh, very serious consequences in terms of economy and society, right? Course, so yes. can you tell us sure. about that and the particular yeah, sure, pathogen? Sure, absolutely. So all plants in nature are associated with microbes. We heard uh, at the keynote talk of Jeff Dankel, uh, who told us how bacteria are ubiquitous in soil and the rhizosphere. Uh, but we shouldn't also ignore the fungi and uh, various other eukaryotic microbes that are uh, associated very closely with plants many of them being endophytes. Uh, but there's also uh, parasites, quite a number of parasites. The particular organism I study, the Irish potato famine, of course had huge impact on uh, the history of mankind, having triggered really the Irish potato famine and uh, leading to really the migration and death of a large number of, of people. Uh, and there's still all sorts of epidemics today. Mm -hmm. So the potato blight uh, causative agent is not a fungus, mm -hmm. right? It's a oh my That's right, yes. So uh, Good, you remember that. I'm, I'm, uh, I always insist on that because phylogenetically, really, from an evolutionary perspective, these are not fungi. They're mm -hmm. very different from the fungi. Mm -hmm. um, I like to say bats are not birds, dolphins are not fish, or mice <laughs> are not fungi, right? So uh, they, they do look like fungi superficially, mm -hmm. uh, but really, truly, they're not fungi. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very different. In fact, they're closely, um, closely or related to the diatoms and the brown oh. algae. So mm -hmm. they're very um, distinct, and they're sort of way out there in the tree of life. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, the Phytospora, uh, they, in fact, uh, the plants from the Solanacea family. That includes potato, tomato, and you're studying, in particular, their interaction with tobacco plants, right? Right, right. So, but that's Phytophthora infestans, so that's the uh, potato blight pathogen. Mm -hmm. That one is quite specific. It mm -hmm. only infects oh, plants potato. in the, in the nightshade family, the potato family. Mm -hmm. So they infect potato, tomato, and we like to use um, this um, tobacco plant, the wild tobacco plant from Australia, which we, we kind of love, actually, and we like to use it as a model system for this pathogen. It's easier to manipulate it. It's called mm -hmm. Nicotiana benthamiana, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's very useful for our research, mm -hmm. and we use it as our as our, our model system. Mm -hmm. So you basically have the leaf of the plant, and the mm -hmm. uh, uh, Phytophthora interacts with the leaf, and there is a very they form a very special structure. Can you tell yeah, us sure, about sure. that? Yeah, sure, sure. This is a very complex organism. It goes through a number of developmental stages. So it forms various spores, and the spores can germinate on the surface of the leaf. They can penetrate the leaf. And then they grow between cells, mm -hmm. and they also have these very special structures where they push inside the plant cells, uh, almost as if you push inside the balloon, right? They're still surrounded by a plant-derived membrane, uh, and these structures, they're called hostoria, and they're really important for the infection cycle of the pathogen. That's when they're very closely associated with the plant. Mm -hmm. So uh, the pa pathogen inject secretes proteins mm -hmm. that yes. are inf that are called effectors right, to yeah. manipulate mm -hmm. the, the plant processes yes. so you mentioned there are basically two kinds or three kinds uh, actually of effectors can you uh, yeah sure so this is now paradigm in our field the plant microbe field so we uh, collectively the whole community sort of discovered in the last 10 years that these microbes uh, secrete all sorts of molecules uh, usually proteins that uh, are acting directly on the plant cell in various ways in Phytophthora, we have uh, two major classes. We have one class of effectors, uh, secreted proteins that don't enter the plant cell, so they operate in the extracellular space. We like this is called the apoplast in, in, in botany, in plant biology. So we call them apoplastic effectors, mm -hmm. or extracellular effectors. And then there's another class uh, of effectors that can actually cross uh, the host membrane and enter the plant cell and they act directly inside the plant cell. So they're really sort of moving away from the pathogen, traveling all the way inside the plant cell and acting inside the plant and doing all sorts of perturbation to mm help -hmm. the pathogen. Mm -hmm. So how is this translocation into the cell plant, uh, plant cell occurring? That's an interesting topic. That's actually a hotly debated topic in, uh, in our field. There's all kind of um, mechanisms that have been proposed. Um, and uh, it's not totally clear, in my opinion, what the mechanism is at the moment. What we know on the other side is that there is uh, a sequence requirement for that. So these effector proteins, the ones that translocate uh, inside the plant cells, uh, they're quite modular. So they have a signal peptide, mm -hmm. so that's for secretion outside the microbe. 
And then they have this region, uh, which is defined by particular um, conserved amino acids. Mm -hmm. So one class, the, the most famous one, if you like, are the RXLR effectors, because they have this invariant amino acid sequence, R, any amino acid, LR, RXLR. And uh, this particular domain is required for the translocation. So that's been uh, defined genetically to be required. Uh, but how they actually enter is, is still a uh, hotly debated topic. So if you have the recombinant protein and you put it on the outside of the cell, can it get it, can it uh, get There's it experiments inside? suggesting that that's the case, yes. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but again, that's also a hotly debated <laughs> topic. So uh, there's experiments suggesting that they can enter in the absence of the pathogen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not totally sure whether that's the case for all the effectors. It seems to be the case indeed for a subset of them. Uh, but some of them, like this other class we study, which have, um, we call them the CRNs or the crinklers, uh, and, and this particular class, they're much larger proteins. And in one case, we study uh, a protein, an effector that has a kinase domain. So this is really cool because the pathogen is actually uh, translocating inside the plant cell, a kinase. Mm -hmm. That's an active kinase acting directly on the plant. So in that case, it's hard for me to imagine that that particular protein can enter by itself. It probably requires some machinery or maybe some chaperones mm -hmm. to guide it and protect it through the, the process. So there might be actually um, more than one mechanism of translocation Absolutely, of these proteins. Absolutely, yes. And, and this is well known in bacterial pathogens with um, uh, the IP complexes of the plasmodium, the malaria family. It's very well known that there's multiple uh, mm -hmm. mechanisms through which uh, effector proteins can enter host cells. Mm -hmm. So once the effector protein is in the whole mm -hmm. cell, the yeah. question is, what are they doing? Yeah, absolutely. So that's right. That, that was my talk, right? Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, they do all kind of amazing things. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have to talk just about my work, but perhaps the most amazing effector that has evolved, uh, that we know of, is uh, this particular class of effectors called the TAL effectors, uh, which are uh, produced by bacteria called Xanthomonas. And these particular effectors bind DNA. But what's really fascinating about them that they repeated proteins and each repeat binds one base in, mm -hmm. the, in the target sequence and there's actually a code, there's a correspondence between the amino acid sequence of the repeat and the base that's being bound. So this became very popular yeah. in the last couple of years in synthetic biology. Yes. You probably heard about them yes. and then the structure is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. this, they spiral around the double helix. It's, it's an absolutely amazing class of effectors. But in most cases these effectors are suppressing immunity. Uh, but uh, they have all kind of other activities. Some pathogens benefit by, for example, uh, uh, creating more plant tissue. So creating proliferation of the plant, basically, mm -hmm. like witch's broom type. Uh, we call it witch's broom because it looks like just uh, sort of crazy growth oh. of the plant. Mm -hmm. And that some, some pathogens benefit from that. Uh, for instance, the ones that are vectored by insects. Uh, so, so by having more green tissue, they increase the likelihood of having an insect come and pick up the, the microbe. So right? that helps spread exactly, the microbe. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So they do all kind of things, actually, mm -hmm. not just suppression of immunity. Mm -hmm. So you told us yesterday about one particular effector mm -hmm. yeah. that has a complicated name, <laughs> AVRBLB2. That's right, AVRBLB2 is one of these effectors, and, and this is one I really like because um, this is uh, one effector that basically opened the door for us to study a mechanism that hasn't been tractable genetically in the past. And this is uh, the mechanism of uh, focal immunity and focal responses to these microbial invasions. So I told you about this structure, the hostorium that push inside the plant cell. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew already that uh, when that happens, and also when other uh, close associations between microbes and plants occur like that, there is um, a very dramatic cytoskeleton reorganization and focal responses of the plant toward this um, invasion site. And AVRBLB2 is, uh, is an effector that, is, that seems to actually um, uh, basically um, uh, associate with these focal responses and, and uh, also dramatically localizes around the hostorium uh, during the infection. And we think this, is, uh, this effector and others like it will help us to dissect uh, these responses, which mm -hmm. are actually quite mysterious at the moment, we mm -hmm. know very little about them. But actually for this particular uh, mm -hmm. effector, you found uh, a very interesting effect on a plant defense mechanism, right? That's right, yeah. So we discovered that AVRBLB2, the effector, is um, preventing the secretion of a plant protease that's important for immunity, and it's trapping it inside the plant cell. And this protease is also, during infection when the hostorium is formed, is also um, focally targeted to the hostorium, mm -hmm. but the effectors seem to intercept it in some mechanism we're still trying to understand and, and block its secretion, and this is beneficial for the pathogen. So you can actually use the effector to understand uh, trafficking 
uh, processes exactly. within the plant cell. Exactly. So that's the beauty of it. So these effectors obviously have evolved to target something very important on the, on the plant side, mm -hmm. so an important process in the plant. So our approach to this is to use the effectors as probes, that molecular probes if you like, that will guide us towards important molecules and important processes in the plant. And that's really the beauty of the effector. We're really exploiting uh, essentially uh, evolution, natural selection, to really uh, guide us towards what is important on the plant side. What is it that the pathogen has to perturb on the plant side to be able to establish itself and colonize the plant. So mm -hmm. in this case, indeed, the effectors guided us and to let us discover the target, which turned out to be this particular protein, uh -huh. which later we discovered is important for plant immunity. So a, a, a plant with a deficiency in this uh, protease is more susceptible yes, to infection? Yes, so we did both experiments. We altered the uh, level of the protease in the plant, both by um, knocking it down and overexpressing it. In both cases, the results were um, consistent with the role of this protease in immunity. So mm -hmm. also when we overexpress it, we enhance the resistance to the pathogen. Mm -hmm. So the genome sequence of this uh, pathogen yeah. is available, right? Of course. And yeah. how many effectors with Rx or LR? Oh, yeah, the genome. I mean, that's, that's a whole different story. I mean, we can spend an hour talking about that. <laughs> I love that story because that genome was really a surprise. We sequenced it with the Broad Institute. Uh, Chad Nussbaum was uh, the lead um, mm -hmm. investigator on that project. It was fantastic because it turned out to be a very complicated genome. It's 240 megabases. It's oh. almost twice the size of the Arabidopsis genome. So who would have thought that yeah. the microbe yeah. would actually have a more complex genome than the plant? And, and uh, it has lots of loads of these effectors. We discovered just the RXLR family, the one I mentioned earlier, we've discovered about 550 genes just for that particular family. So there's lots and lots of these effectors in this genome. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you put this, as you said, you, you can put this module in front of uh, another thing and you can uh, direct it to be secreted into yes, the cell? Yes, that's right. So can you use that to yeah. put things into the cell? Yes, we can use that. This is, this, uh, I mean, there's easier ways really to introduce uh, genes inside plants. So we haven't really used it from, let's say, biotechnology perspective, but we use it experimentally to demonstrate mm -hmm. that uh, other um, uh, motifs and other domains in, in some of these effectors uh, are also functioning translocation by mm -hmm. simply exchanging the RXLR region by another sequence. Mm -hmm. And that's how we d validated another uh, family of effectors, the crinklers, the mm -hmm. CRNs. And also some of our colleagues have used that system to look at other uh, other translocation domains from uh, other homoiceids. Mm -hmm. So uh, talking about how to introduce <laughs> proteins yeah. in the cells, yeah. you have this cool system with agrobacterium, oh right? Oh yes, Can you tell I love it. it. I showed you the movie, huh? yeah. you liked it. That's this agroinfiltration assay. So that's one of the beauty of this model system we use, Nicosiana bentamiana. I like to call it the HeLa cells of <laughs> plant biology. And I think Arabidopsis is the mouse. You can do a lot of genetics mm -hmm. uh, with Arabidopsis. Uh, and I think bentamiana, Nicosiana bentamiana, we call it Bentley. In the oh, lab, yeah. nickname. <laughs> we nickname, of <laughs> course. It's, we love it. And uh, it's, a, it's a great plant for uh, doing these transient assays. Uh, and so we can use another pathogen. It's kind of funny. We, use, we trick another pathogen, Agrobacterium, which is a bacterium that delivers DNA inside the plant. So we can actually transiently transform these leaves uh, with, uh, with DNA containing mm -hmm. the gene we like. And then uh, after a day or two, the, the leaf, the, the cells in that leaf will actually express that transgene. And we can quickly do assays that way. So this is really wonderful because we essentially uh, can um, screen and test a large number of, of constructs uh, and select the ones that give us the best phenotypes before we move to making transient stable plants, which is a process that takes several months mm -hmm. and is quite tedious. Mm -hmm. So experimentally, it's been wonderful to use it. Can you also do knockdowns in... Uh yes, you can do knockdowns. There's different methods. Uh, one of them involves yet another pathogen. So we use pathogens as tools, also a virus. Um, so uh, viruses are recognized by plants, and plants have activate an RNAi mm -hmm. um, response against viruses. So we can trick the plant to silence its own gene mm -hmm. by adding sequences into the virus. This is called virus-induced gene silencing. Uh, there's also other methods that allow us to knock out genes in, uh, in Nicosiana bentamiana. And I'm really excited because just recently our colleagues in, um, in Cornell in Ithaca uh, at the Boyce Thompson Institute has, have completed the genome sequence of Bentley. Mm -hmm. so oh, that's great. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, so it's really great to have that genome too, which will really help us for our research. So in, it seems that everything is poised for you to 
really manipulate the system and ask the interesting questions and get the interesting answers. Yes, no, absolutely. But one, one problem, one challenge we have, and we have 550 of these affected <laughs> genes in the genome. I mean, how, much can, how many of them can we study in all detail, right? You could, spend, you could have a whole lab working on a single effector, right? So this is really a challenge for the community and, and really balancing uh, these screens that many of us do, mm -hmm. these large-scale screens. We screen for all sorts of aspects of effector biology, if you like. Uh, versus sort of picking up one effector and studying it very deeply and, as we say, dig deeper yes. uh, to understand um, uh, these effectors in more detail. So this is really, I think, a challenge and that the entire community faces. And uh, we're, not, we're not a very large community. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a very active one, as we can see from this meeting, right? Yeah, it's very active. You saw it was a fun session last night, yes, right? Yes, yeah, very absolutely. active. And now also we're getting um, to have more... Um, uh, more tools in the community. I mean, the cell biology is really emerging. Uh, mm -hmm. Structural biology is finally mm -hmm. reaching us. I mean, you're, 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 you know about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I'm and here. And yeah, exactly. And so, uh, so last year, actually, we and our colleagues published the first um, crystal structures of these RXLR effectors, which turned out to also be quite interesting because mm -hmm. we discovered some relationships that we were not aware of previously. So that was quite fun. And um, yeah, so there's all kind of new tools um, really emerging all the time. And, and yeah, this is fun. Okay, well, great. Thanks for talking to me, and I Thank hope you, you enjoy the rest yeah, of the meeting. I, you too. Enjoy it. Pleasure to be